Have you ever received a gift you didn't want? If so, what'd you do with it? Did you return it or just hide it away somewhere? Or maybe you gave it later in a white elephant gift exchange. Well, Paul tells us that God has given us Christians a gift, but it doesn't sound like something we want. Paul tells us in verse 29 of chapter 1, For it has been granted to you that for the sake of Christ you should not only believe in Him, but also suffer for His sake. Well, personally, I'm very thankful that God sacrificed His Son and offered salvation and granted to me that I should believe and be saved. Not so much, though, to suffer for His sake. You know, can I pass on that? <laughs> can we leave that part out? How is that being granted something? You know, granted, in this context, sounds like, you know, being given a gift. How is that a gift in any sense of the word? Well, the key there is for Christ's sake. When he says that, you know, Christ died to save us, to forgive us, to restore that relationship now and for eternity. But that only happens when people believe in it. That only happens when people hear about it. And so we need to share that news with them. We need to share the gospel. Paul says that's going to bring about suffering. Uh, look what he says, and you continue that. Verse 29 again to get the thought. For it has been granted for you that for the sake of Christ you should not only believe in him, but also suffer for his sake, engaged in the same conflict that you saw I had and now hear that I still have. Paul's in prison for sharing the gospel. Paul says that's part of all of this. For us to share the gospel in some way, in some form, is going to bring some suffering. That's been granted to us. And if we have a temporary physical perspective, we're going to say, yeah, I'll pass on that. Don't want that to be a part of my Christian life. But when we have this eternal spiritual perspective that just runs throughout this book and is key to understanding what Paul is saying here, we realize it's a privilege. You know, in verse 5, he talked about this partnership in the gospel. It's a privilege for me to be able to share what God has done, to have any part in then people coming to believe in Him and be saved. We need to view it that way, and I need to view it that way. I'm not saying it's easy, you know, especially in our culture, I think. How, how does suffering fit in my view of the Christian life? And in the United States, it's something we try to avoid. In the rest of the world, you hear their stories, they just realize it. They get what's throughout the pages of the New Testament. It's part of the Christian life. And then, what all might suffering include? You know, certainly at the far extreme, there is persecution to the point even of martyrdom, death. But, you know, what about the other side? As I talk about sharing the gospel, you know, it might just be embarrassment or fear of embarrassment or rejection. Or maybe some kind of sacrifice. You know, to do that, it's going to take some time, going to take some effort maybe to learn some things I need to do, some effort to build the relationships, really a whole other matter of what it means to be a witness versus just witness, just say the things. You know, that, that's going to be different. That's going to be a cost in one way. Am I willing to, to do that, to suffer in that sense or whatever sense I'm called on? You know, also, how do strong Christian relationships help with this? Now, I think it helps in general, but certainly with this. How does it help to have some other Christians who are committed to the same thing? And then what also came to my mind as we think about applying this is, when is the last time that you or I have suffered in any way for Christ's sake? Whatever it was, doing the right thing, certainly being a witness, helping spread the gospel. When's the last time, and what was my response to it? How did I react to it? That's going to say a lot about my perspective, whether it's eternal and spiritual or temporary and physical. You know, apply these things that Paul says here and see what they do to, to make a difference in your life.